G'day guys, my name's Dave Tran and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. And in this lesson, I'll be teaching you how to play I Think I'm Okay by Machine Gun Kelly, Young Blood, and Travis Barker. Now in this lesson, I'm gonna teach you a more acoustic sounding version, but I'll also show you how to play the power chords as well if you wanna make it a more rock version. If you wanna master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you wanna take your guitar to the next level, then sign up to Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. For the basics of this song, you'll just need your guitar in standard tuning, no capo. The guitar I'm playing here today is a Cole Clark Fat Lady 2 with the licks of strings. Machine Gun Kelly released his own lesson for this, but it's quite short. I'm gonna go into a bit more detail. But mad respect to the guy, I actually didn't know he could play guitar, so he's quite a talented guy. All right, first I'm going to teach you how to play the intro, which is really nice and easy. It's a cool little melody. So we're going to start with our middle finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string. And we're going to have our pinky finger on the seventh fret of the third string. Now my suggestion is anytime you're going to pluck the fourth string, you pluck it with a down pluck. And anytime you're going to pluck the third string, you pluck it with an up pluck. So we're gonna start by hitting the fourth, then third string. Then you'll lift your pinky finger and you'll have your index finger here ready on the fourth fret of the third string. We'll pluck that and the first three notes. For our second set of three notes, we'll stay in this position, pluck the fourth string, third string, and then lift out your next finger and hit that open third string. So the second set of three notes. And then we end with the fourth string and third string. And when we put that all together, this is the first section of the riff. Now in the intro, that first bit is played through three times. And then we get to the second part of the riff, which is very similar. The only thing we're changing is that seventh fret of the third string. We're changing it to the fifth fret of the third string. So our first set of three notes and everything else is exactly the same. And all together. Putting that all together, the intro will sound like this. When we move on to the rest of the song though, this riff changes a tiny bit in terms of structure. Now that first section of the riff will be played through six times, and depending on whether the song has accented pauses or we're playing through, you'll play the second section either once or twice. If you want more clarification on that, then just go to the end of this video where there's the playthrough and you can see what I mean. That's it for the intro riff, and now I'm gonna teach you how to play the chords. I'm gonna start with more acoustic sounding chords, but then I'm gonna teach you how to basically apply them to power chords if you wanna play a more rock version. So our first line of chords is C add nine. Then we have an E minor seven. So from the C add nine, just lift your index and middle finger and put them on both on the second frets of the fifth and fourth strings. You can strum all the strings there, and that's E minor seven. And then we have a D chord. That's the first line of chords. Now, all of those three chords are within one bar in terms of timing. The first chord is on the one beat, the second chord is on the end beat after the two, and then the third chord changes on the four beat. So if we're playing a more stripped back section where there's no strumming pattern, it will sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... So you just hold that D out for the next bar as well. Our second line of chords is identical, except we're changing the E minor 7 for a G chord. So from a C add 9, it's really easy. You just move your index and middle finger up one string. The third line of chords is identical to the first line of chords. And then the fourth line of chords is A minor, G slash B. So it's the same as a G, except we're going to start our chord from the fifth string onwards. We're going to focus on that B bass note. And then we end with an E minor 7. And in terms of rhythm, those chords change at the same positions as well. So it will sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... That's it for the main chord progression, which is played throughout the whole song. Now to add some variation in the song, we play that chord progression, but with different strumming patterns or feels throughout the song. In the stripped back parts, I just strum each chord once. 
In the chorus, I'm gonna use a continuous down strumming pattern. One and two and three and four and. So as shown in the tabs, the first and second chords will be strummed three times. And then when we go to our third chord, these will be strummed 10 times. Now an easy way to break this up when you're counting is three, three, two. That will be the first bar. And then two groups of four with this last chord. So an easy way to keep track of the timing. And if we apply that to the whole chord progression. Now to add even more dynamic to this chord progression, we can add palm muting to those strums. So to palm mute, take the fleshy bit of your palm, rest it lightly on the edge of the bridge as you strum and focus on the bass notes of the chords. Don't worry about hitting all the strings, just focus on the bass notes of each chord you're playing. So palm muted, the first line of chords would sound like this. Now there's a couple of variations throughout the song where there's a pause at the end of this chord progression and it just depends. In the pre-chorus, we play this last E minor seven three times. And that only occurs in the pre-choruses. At the end of the first and second chorus, that last E minor is actually just strummed once and then we pause. The important thing to note though that at its core, that chord progression stays exactly the same. And the only variations we're making are to the strumming pattern or whether we cut that last E minor short or not. Finally, for the halftime outro part, instead of doing all down strums, I'm gonna do a down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. The points where we change chords remain exactly the same. So the halftime section would sound like this. If you want to play a more rocky version of this, then just substitute the chords that I've taught for their power chord equivalents. So if we were to do that, it would sound like this. Now I'll be playing through the song in its entirety and I'll have a vocal track on top for some context. A big thank you to my friend and artist by the name of Tugla for lending his vocals for this playthrough. He's got a cover of this song as well. If you want to check that out, there's a link in the description below. Feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to, but practice play along too and see how you go. scary for ya watch me
Thanks for watching guys, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to head over to guitarzerodohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook, or if you wanna take your guitar to the next level, then sign up to Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. It'd mean the world if you could hit that like button, hit subscribe, and click the little notification bell as well so that you don't miss out on my updates. Please leave your thoughts, comments, questions, or requests down below, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.